Good luck. Okay, everybody. Let's get started in Nantucket Conservation Commission meeting for Wednesday, January 9th. If you could put your cell phones on silence, we'd really appreciate it. And if you're recording, please let us know because this uh, meeting is being recorded as well. So I'm going to start with the public meeting, public comment. Items <laughs> not being heard tonight. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Cormac Holly, Nantucket Land Council. I'm just filling in for Emily. She asked me specifically to ask you guys. Um, I'm not going to be here for the um, administrative comment, but she asked me specifically to ask you guys um, that hopefully there was follow up on removal enforcement action for the pipes that were going into the harbor and into Concert Spring. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Any other public comment? Okay. So we're going to go into the public hearing, notice of intent. We have a bunch of continuances here. Uh, Mary D. Starr, 19 East Creek Road, continued till January 23rd. Gregory Race, 19 East Creek Road, January 23rd. Hither Creek Boatyard, 20 North Cambridge Street, is continued till February 6th. Uh, LAZ Family. Um, 20 Wakuit Road, January 23rd. Town Nantucket 4, Bathing Beach Road, continued till February 6th. PSS Hummock Pond LLC, 289 Hummock Pond, continued till January 23rd. <laughs> uh, Hagenbart, 6 Wall Street, continued till January 23rd. Eel Point Nominee Trust, 189 Eel Point Roads, continues to the 23rd of January as well. And SB Norwell LLC, 104 and 111 Washington Street is continued till January 23rd. January 23rd is going to be a fun day. So other than that, uh, so we are going to start with uh, Waypoint LLC, 71 Pacamore Road. Pacamo Road. the applicant, Art Gasparro. Uh, this is the coastal stabilization project which we've been uh, before you um, and already presented, which is a, to quickly recap, is the extension of the existing uh, so-called Pacamo Neighbors stabilization project. And there was some discussion and concerns at the last hearing regarding the, um, uh, the netting that had been historically been being used. Um, which encases the rolls and has been used to um, uh, make the reinforced lifts. And so um, I, I heard what you had to say, and what we've done is to modify the design to remove that netting and replace it with um, just quar blanket, essentially the 900 gram, but the heavier duty quar blanket, which would go around the log once and then around to make the lifts. And that doesn't have any um, uh, non-degradable materials associated with it. It's such a straight quark fabric. Uh, the rest of the assemblage would still be the same as before with the cables and the duckbill anchors. And again, I would um, hope that you would agree that that is uh, a good part of the design because when we had first started this several years ago and the first ones that went in using quad rope had resulted in a loss of some of these logs to, to the harbor. So the cables um, with the anchoring you know, could always be retrieved, um, could always be removed, and um, but the netting that you'd be worried of, that you, what I heard the concern being worried about uh, is, is no longer part of the design. I think the downside is I don't think it will. Well, it's I don't I don't think it's as robust of a design, but I think that it still will serve the purpose and meet the performance standards as well as allow for the vegetation to to grow. Um, is the casing of the fiber rolls themselves still? No. Okay, so that's switched by right. debris as well. Last meeting talked <coughs> about the. Identification, identification tags being attached to that netting. Is, we have some sort of. Uh, yeah, I mean that's going to that that would be uh, I think part, 
a, a more of a challenge now. Yeah. I mean, we'll still attach the, the stainless steel tags uh, <clears throat> to the logs themselves, but not to the fabric. It doesn't make any sense yeah. to try to put mm -hmm. a tag on a, on a piece of fabric. Uh, which gets back to sort of what we had discovered with the um, so-called um, sand tubes, right? You right. can't really tag enough enough of it. We'll still tag the logs themselves, but even that, I think, will be one of the benefits of that casing was that it gave you something that you really could um, so be identifiable. Right. Well, I'd, I'd go for a biodegradable net that probably will break apart before it causes problems hmm. over some sort of identifiable sure. fishing Absolutely. net. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's when it's caught in someone's wheel. I didn't know if you had another plan. Or, you know. No. Okay. Thanks, Art. Other questions? Okay. Any questions from the public? <coughs> okay. Jeff, we have everything we need? Yes. Close. All right, you ready to close? Yes, please. Motion close. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Art. <laughs> Clarkford Partners, Nominee Trust 17, Kimball Lab. Seventeen Kimball Ave is a uh, fully developed residential lot, um, access from Kimball Ave with frontage along Nantucket Sound. Uh, the application before you is a notice of intent uh, to install a sand drift zigzag fence uh, at the interface between the coastal beach and the coastal dune uh, that exists along the northerly perimeter or side of this property. Uh, the area itself does fall within uh, mapped natural heritage um, jurisdiction. Um, we do presently have a DEP file number and we also have had uh, gotten a response or received a response for Division of Fisheries and Wildlife with regard to the application. Uh, the plan itself is um, this, the standard kind of sand drift fence that you've been used to seeing. Uh, we're installing approximately 128 linear feet, which is property line to property line. Um, again at the interface of the coastal beach and the coastal dune. Uh, the material proposed on the plan is a five inch diameter pile um, set into, into the ground with uh, two by four inch horizontal and one by two vertical panels. The review uh, by NHESP uh, actually requested that we go to a minimum of either a four by four or a four inch diameter um, type of, of pile. So. Uh, with the exception of the construction standards, that's the only modification that they had requested with regard to uh, materials um, for the project. Uh, access, construction access to the site will be proposed along the beach uh, above mean high water from Jetty's Beach. Uh, all work will be prohibited during the periods of April 1st to, April, to August 31st uh, with regard to uh, specific concerns for the pipe and clover. Uh, with, and then, without prior written permission from the town of Nantucket Beach Manager, no access will be allowed until such time as um, notice is provided. Uh, sand nourishment will be on a voluntary basis. Uh, again, notice of sand nourishment will be provided to the Commission and the Natural Resource Department uh, prior to placement. Uh, just an initial estimate that the, the sand drift fence itself projects about three feet out from the bottom of the dune, approximately three feet high. If you look at the configuration that we have here, which is approximately 128 square feet, um, if we were to nourish it, uh, you're looking at approximately 30 yards of, of sand. So I think it's just shy of, of, of the, when you take the zigzag into account, the three foot height and just putting the sand back in, on the back side of it, you're looking at about 30 yards of nourishment. Um, the letter from Division of Fisheries and Wildlife uh, basically said that um, the information 
Um, in the opinion of the division, the portion of the project that is currently proposed must be conditioned in order to avoid adverse effects to the resource area habitat and state listed wildlife species and must be conditioned in, in order to provide a prohibited take. And then they set forth uh, construction conditions which mimic the what we had already put into the NOI with regard to the April 1st to August 31st deadline. Uh, they were specific on this, this particular one about the sand fencing, limiting it to a four by four or four inch pile. Um, the spacing on the, uh, the slats in the fencing is as required is as we had originally laid out um, on the plan. Uh, they did specifically uh, limit the cross bracing to a maximum of two two by four horizontal supports as opposed to the three uh, that we had depicted on the plan. And they did uh, talk about beach nourishment with regard to if a slope is over a one in 10 horizontal and vertical, notification of sand, com of sand placement with not only local but also the state. And they did um, request that the posts or piles be cut on a 45 degree angle with the highest point, um, and there'd be a one inch gap, and what they're trying to do is reduce uh, predator perch. They do not want to see the posts becoming predator perches. So they've specifically on this one requested a 45 degree angle with the highest point adjoining the sand fence. The sand fence shall be at least one inch above the highest point of the post. This will reduce the likelihood that the post will be utilized as predator perch. So the first one I've seen that had, had that on, I may have not maybe the first time a commission has seen it, but um, and so that's their their particular um, review. Um, we will modify the plan accordingly based on that on that review. Um, as I said, we do have our DEP file number, and I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. I mean, this is an area typically where a lot of the homeowners have put out. Seasonal, just the seasonal fencing, um, and I think what they're just looking at is a more long-term um, solution in this particular area uh, with regard. And typically, what will happen here is the sand will build up along the fence. It's not like we're typically losing sand in this particular area, but it's a it's an area to capture sand within the winter months. Um, and there has been some uh, movement of this dune over the past few years. Uh, the bottom of the dune, actually, as we at the time of the survey was approximately elevation 75, the 100 year flood line in this particular area, it's a velocity zone at elevation nine, and mean high water along the sound is 1.2 um, with regard, and all those are depicted on the, on the plan itself. Uh, the NHESP limit is actually completely encompassing the area, uh, the upland area in this case, or the, the coastal bank itself is not being touched. Um, that area is above NHESP juris jurisdiction. Uh, and then there is also an existing historic set of beach stairs that runs along the property line and accesses the beach um, that a number of the homeowners in this particular area have, have rights to use these beach stairs. There's an easement for some of the additional homeowners up on Kimball Ave. So we'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Um, I've got two questions. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to nourish with sand, you're going to truck that from jetties on the beach? Yes, that would be the only way to access the site. Okay. Um, and then my second question, you may or may not be able to answer this. I used to work on this property, and <coughs> yeah. I thought, and maybe it was illegal, that they had had a sand drift fence at one point. Oh, I'm sure they did. And then it just disappeared. Oh, no, not, I don't think that, but they haven't fully had they, a... They had a pretty, like, robust yeah. one that went in. Um, but obviously there's no evidence down there. No, anymore. nothing out of it, no. And there's no, no indication of posts or anything else in that, in that particular area. Yeah, on this property or on the next one, I know further down, I've seen sand drift. I know that yeah. that other, the, the snow fence basically is what they've used over there you know, in, in years past. Yeah. But no indication yeah. out there now of, of anything. From, from, a, from just where the dune is actually to mean high water, there's nothing out there. I really weighed in on you, this one. What's that? This is, I think, the most comments I've ever seen on a sand dirt fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you too, Jeff. I mean, I, was, I didn't know if, you know, Art had maybe hey. seen one recently with the perch and everything else. Oh, but yeah. no. And it's, they were specific well, about you um, the slope of the sand fill not exceeding one to ten. They, they do make a lot of reference to Coastal Bank, I think, mm -hmm. in a, you know, not really correctly because the dune is, <coughs> can't be a bank, but, but they do, yeah, they were specific. Pile size, spacing, the perch, the, yeah, they were, and even the nourishment. 
All sand nourishment placed at a maximum slope of 1 to 10, 1 foot vertical for every 10 horizontal. Any deviations, slope must be approved in writing by the division. Compliance report within 15 days of completion. Um, yeah, so they were very specific on it. So in cases like this where they give a lot, we usually just attach the entire letter yeah. to the order of conditions just so the references right through it. So. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Any questions from the public? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for my colleagues, I'm going to I don't have any problems with the application, more just curiosity in terms of the heritage. And was it a different reviewer? <laughs> no, because it was. New guy. Well, sometimes I think I got it out of Amy. Yeah. No, I think it was, it was Amy. Amy. No, it was Amy. It, was Amy. Okay. it may just be a new directive from them. It's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, they, and secondly, um, mm. so I got a call once about um, the Hinkley. Lane project, the coastal st stabilization project on Hinkley Lane. You go down Hinkley, it's past Kimball, mm -hmm. and a guy called me. He said, "How, um, how did uh, they get permission from the Concom to go across my private land?" He lives, he probably lives off of Kimball, mm -hmm. so all of that is private from the jetty <coughs> to Hinkley. And this isn't necessarily, I think, your issue, but it kind of is as it relates to access, I guess. It's not really jurisdiction, but it's access. He, he assumed that you, wrongly assumed, you gave the Hinkley, Lo uh, Road, uh, Hinkley Lane homeowner permission to cross his property. So he obviously wrong wrongly assumed that, but I don't know how you're going to deal with this in the future. Obviously, almost every property here is going to have to have this at some point. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be an access issue. The more um, a private property access issue, the more this is going to happen. We haven't had that problem in Pacamo and Hill Point because everybody's on board. But I, I, I did get a call. I told him just to call up Jeff. I don't know if he ever ended up did. He probably oh, did. Oh, yeah. But he did. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, one, yeah. they're going to need permission from the town, how that goes about, whether it's through Libby or even the board um, of selectmen, is probably just through Libby to access use jetties. But I would just say, I mean, it's not my business, but yeah, you're going to be pro crossing private property. Heads up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just heads up. <laughs> Well, the building code you can work on, you can stand on someone else's property while working on your house. So I don't know if that helps any way here. Can you really? So you yeah. need your truck to stand <laughs> Well, I mean, think about if you're downtown, sense. if you it makes have sense to downtown. Yeah. something. Yeah. Well, to cross, I mean, it's something where they obviously, for, for town property, it's very similar to 40th Pole where you gain permission from the land bank, and then it's just crossing private property. So that's incumbent upon them to gain that permission. I mean, I don't think the sand, I mean, that's why we put it in there as voluntarily. I don't think it's going to be a yearly thing. I think what's going to happen, the intent of this is more so to collect the sand in the winter months sure. and actually have, a, have yeah. an area where it can, where it can accumulate, because that's generally what happens in this particular area. But, and even at that, you know, 25, 30 yards is not much. Truck loads is not much, but it's the it's moving the, <coughs> the loader down and forth, because you're not going to bring the truck down. The no, you're going to have a bucket. It's going to yeah. be the bucket. So, what do you got in the bucket? Ten loads. Yeah. Throw the three yeah. yard bucket. <laughs> I did some of that, though, where they just had the old crappy, like, fencing. Snow fence. Yeah, the yeah. sand, the snow fence. Yeah. 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 <coughs> no. And actually, I, I filed for um, nine Kimball this past meeting also, so I'm assuming I'll, it'll be the same. It, it, it'll tie right in the two of them. Uh, oh, nine Kimball yeah. is the same thing. Mm. So. Okay. Well, if there are no other public comments, comments from the commissioners, Jeff, we have everything we need. Yes, sir. Would you like to close? Yes. Okay. Do you have a motion? Yeah, move to close. Second. All in favor? Town of Nantucket, F Street. GZA uh, here representing the town of Nantucket uh, for this uh, bulkhead replacement project at F Street. I am here um, with Chuck Larson, um, who is a project manager for the town as well. Um, this site is at the northern uh, end of F Street uh, on Hither Creek, 
and it's an existing um, filled pier that's approximately 20 feet wide and about 92 feet long uh, on the west side. I'm sorry, on the east side and about 78 feet long on the uh, west side. Further to the west of this filled pier is a boat ramp. It's a state boat ramp. And um, this site is used um, by both commercial and recreational users. Um, we tried to find out some information on when this was originally constructed, and we weren't able to get anything, or I wasn't able to get anything from the town. I, I was able to find a plan from 1946 that actually showed this pier on there. Um, I'm sure there's probably people that know more about the history than I do, but I'm assuming that this was once a timber bulkhead because we can see remnants of part of that timber bulkhead that was out there. And at some point, it was uh, replaced with a steel sheet pile bulkhead. I'm estimating that's probably about 50 years ago that that was done, 40 to 50, based on the condition, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But in 2005, the landward ends of the pier um, 42 feet on the east side and 32 uh, feet on the west side was replaced. It was an existing timber bulkhead in this portion, uh, both on from both sides, and it was replaced with a steel sheet pile bulkhead that married into the older one that was there. So because of the age, uh, we, we ended up uh, doing an inspection. Uh, we did an underwater inspection along with the top side. We did survey work, geotech borings out there um, in February 2017. And basically what we found is uh, kind of like Swiss cheese, that bulkhead, at least in the older section. There's quite a bit of holes. Um, we have some representative photographs in the narrative and the photo log. And you can get a pretty good sense of you know the, the condition by just looking at those photos. The top side um, of this pier is a bituminous surface and um, it's been repaired, patched, and fixed, I guess, numerous times. Um, and it's basically, in, with the holes in the sheathing, you can pretty much tell why. It's all the uh, material uh, being lost out through the holes and sediment. So with the condition there, um, we um, were tasked to look at what we could do out there for uh, improving the site and what we're proposing to do is installing a new steel sheet pile bulkhead around the perimeter of the existing that's uh, approximately 200 feet long total and it'll go right in front of the existing one um, and once that is uh, set in place it will be a cantilever design and once that's in place we will remove the top two feet of the existing steel sheet pile bulkhead around there fill the void space between the two with crushed stone, take up the bituminous and take out that um, sub-base there down to um, approximately about two feet, put crushed stone and put the bituminous back. Um, with going outside of the uh, footprint here, the guide piles that are currently on, there's nine guide piles here, they're gonna be taken up and removed and redriven with the exception of the ones on the west side, up against the boat ramp. There's two there, there's one in the corner. The one in the corner will be replaced, but because we're encroaching on the distance between the existing uh, sheet pile, or the pier, the existing sheeting, and the boat ramp, there's gonna not, not gonna be enough room to be able to redrive those piles. So we're gonna end up putting um, HDP rubber sections on those sheets itself, and that'll act as the fendering. We will impact the boat ramp in the sense that there's a concrete abutment that's cast in place here. The ramp itself is a precast concrete ramp um, that I believe was um, uh, reconstructed or constructed in 2012 and in order to facilitate the driving of the sheets will impact uh, just this top concrete but the remaining of the ramp will stay as, as is. We don't intend to touch any other component of the ramp. Um, so with that um, you know, we're driving the new sheets, taking out, you know, a portion of the existing, back on with crushed stone and repaving it. Um, that's basically the, um, the project. I'll entertain any questions. Is the catch basin going to have any filters or anyway? Yeah, so the question came up about the catch basin and the, the intent or the direction um, that I was given from the town was we're just going to extend that pipe, the six inch diameter pipe out through the new sheet. Um, there was not going to be any change um, to that catch basin. 
I did um, read the Division Marine Fisheries comment letter, and that was one of their comments uh, 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 or concerns about the drainage. We did look a little closer. We our survey extends uh, beyond up into the roadway, beyond our sheet limits here, and we did look a little closer at that as far as where runoff would be, and it pretty much kind of goes off on the side towards the marsh here, at least on the east side, and the west side kind of goes down on the on the uh, on the ramp side. There is a portion that you know at certain points you can actually see the five contour and the four. This is at a depressed area, right. so I don't know. I guess that was by design because it is in the middle and the haven, you know, it's not just from settlement, it does go in there, although I don't think it's quite effective because the catch basin is up above the pavement. So there's always a puddle, I guess, that it's Yeah, that's why I'm right. asking, is there something that's gonna make that more effective, but there's also a way to contain any liquids because there's a lot of jerry jugs of like gasoline going on there. So I'm just worried about spillage and then just drive. Yeah, so I did um the, the, I did have a conversation with the town. My understanding is that people aren't allowed to park there, number one. But they do. <laughs> I, I know, I know. But I, I guess, and then uh, they're not allowed to fuel uh, at the site. They do. <laughs> so we don't have a monitor out there. Right. So, um, so as far as any improvements to this, again, the direction I was given, we we're just going to extend the pipe, keep it as is. Obviously, we're going to have it so it would bring properly to the new pavement. Uh, but we weren't going to look to do any other um, type of improvements to that catch basin. The only thing I can think of is maybe you can put a T on there, you know, to, to kind of when the material goes in there, it's not a direct discharge out through the pipe, and you have the T you know, with that kind of like a cycle there. But um, that's, that's uh, the way we have presented it. Yeah, I kind of like to see something because I've just seen stuff go on there. Right. So, I think while you're doing the work, you might as well make it correct, you know. So. What would the commission be looking for? Like a treatment unit or something that just some to kind be of containment? Out or? Yeah, just if there's some uh, either filtering or some way to catch any of that spillage. You know, I don't know yeah, the yeah, best system to use. Sort. I don't know what I mean, it, yeah, whatever. I don't know it's available. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what's the latest and greatest? We don't have a whole lot of separation distance between the rim elevation here and what mean high water is. It's yeah, and that's the other question is like, what's what's the size of that, the volume that that catch basin could hold as well? Yeah, and I don't I don't have that number for you yet. I mean, I think just again based on runoff, it's it's really this area right here, which is the essentially say twenty by a hundred. Right. That's not a whole lot of volume for runoff. But we're only about a half a foot, at least the rim elevation the way it is now. Would it be Before better to not have a catch basin? Well, I think the direct, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of a catch 22. You want to drain it because you're going to have, what, six to eight inches of a lip? So you're going to have this puddle, and so it's just kind it's of what you do. It's going to be the steel on the edges, yeah. You could crown it the other way, you know, and, and have it just run off and not have it concave into the. Then it's kind of like pushing it to somebody else's problem. That's right. correct. Yeah, you're still doing it. You're still yeah. going to get it in there. I just, mm -hmm. some way to grab whatever is going to be coming off. I mean. So, I mean, the steel cap is so far above the pavement. You can't crown it that much. Jeff, we've <coughs> permitted these sort of catch basins with like a, a sock filter. There should be a separator right there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> something. Yep. Nothing to it. I can check program. back right. yeah. again with the town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one second. Yeah. We need to stay through you if we can. Pardon? We need to either get names or. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, if you make a comment, you guys. Pardon me, Billy Cassidy. Billy Cassidy, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Terry will yell at me if we don't <laughs> get names. <laughs> okay. Where'd you go? <laughs> so are you going to do most of this work from the bulkhead itself then, or are you going to have to be out in the water? Well, the, the intent was to do, to try to do everything from land. You know, set up a crane, do the pile driving from land. <coughs> I think, you know, we. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of a work float or work skips that, that are going to be used. I also want to leave it open that I'm not sure how the materials would, you know, 200 feet of sheeting, if the contractor may elect to bring a barge in and, and offload it from the water. 
Uh, I don't think they'd want to operate from the water because you just wouldn't have the reach and you don't have enough water depth out there to be able to have a barge come in close, um, with the exception of maybe just conveying materials back and forth. But uh, our intent is uh, land based. So I think it makes sense. To drive the piles in, are you worried about siltation? We put a boom around the whole work site. Okay. It's already got that painted. How far these go down? I mean, you guys did a core sample? Or something? Yeah, we did. We did two borings that went 45 feet below the uh, surface um, before we stopped. Mm -hmm. The sheets, um, because it's deeper out here, you get about five feet of water out here and yeah. low water, and then obviously it's nothing up here. We're going to stagger the depths of the sheets, transaction cost. So it's about 21 feet at Medmond, or from the top of the sheet okay. to the bottom here, and about 35, 34, 35 feet up there in the deeper section. Mm -hmm. So not terribly long pieces to deal with. Not terribly long. Yeah. yeah. No. But the can lever design is so they don't have a Timex system. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. There is the existing old sheets. Um, does have a Timex? We're assuming it does. We see the bolts. It's yeah. going to be an interior way on there. Okay. Uh, other questions? Other thoughts? Yeah. No. Any comments from the public? Please, and you can give us your name. Uh, Bill Breeder, Tastry. Um, I am the closest to butter. Um, there was a notification glitch. Uh, they were sent to a mainland address instead of an island address, and I just happened to note that this hearing was tonight. So, um, I, I unfortunately you being spared the wrath of me going ballistic because I. I didn't know about this. Um, uh, I, I did note uh, in the peer description, which has been corrected by the presenter, that the, the description of the peer uh, is incorrect. It says that it's primarily used for commercial um, fishermen and folks uh, transporting to the islands. Um, absolutely incorrect. That's part of it. Um, but mainly it's recreational um, use uh, throughout uh, the year, especially during the summer months. Um, well, it is true that the commercial guys tie the place up most by sitting there for hours instead of going to their moorings, but that's another story. Um, I will note uh, and uh, I thank the uh, engineering company for including in the process that the vehicles um, are not filled on the dock, that they have spill kits, that they're inspected for uh, leakage. And I only wish the town and the Concom would adopt those very same restrictions because there is fueling on the dock commercially done uh, for commercial boats and it's diesel fuel. And um, at some point, I think you will be involved in some sort of spill activity that's going to be catastrophic. It's not a question of if, it will happen. Um, and you can see in the pictures, uh, when you're talking about the drainage, the way the vehicles are parked, um, the sheet flows right down into it. So, um, Vehicles with leaking gas tanks. Uh, you can see in the summertime these big sections of tar that are discolored from uh, fuel spills on the street itself. And you can see the trails going down. Um, the last couple of years we've been fortunate and uh, there hasn't been major incidents. Although at the end of the summer I picked up a bunch of the uh, pads that they throw in when they spills, trying to absorb the uh, oil. So I have a souvenir that I. Um, keeping just as a, a memento from last summer, but it does happen and the town generally is not notified unless the cranky guy next door, which is me, calls up. Um, the light pole uh, placement, I know it's going to be moved. Um, the concern would be that the lighting instrument that's on that pole um, will lose its throw to the end of the pier. Um, that light pole is uh, a recent installation recent, depending on your age, uh, but that was put in there uh, to keep my father from calling it every other night because of the um, less than um, family, family friendly activity that was going on down on the dock. Um, and there is a lot of night activity down there. Uh, and so safety wise, I would suggest that that instrument replacement uh, be looked at to 
right now we just go down, but to increase the light throw down towards the uh, water um, to facilitate safety uh, and security. And the other thing uh, that you can see in the picture is uh, on the ramp, there's two pilings um, that used to have boards on them uh, to keep boats from bouncing onto the marsh after um, mm -hmm. um, folks that had issues getting on or off their trailer and it would, it would bounce off of it and it would keep them uh, in the throat of the boat ramp. Those boards uh, went away last year uh, with a couple of the storms um, and uh, safety wise there's uh, the spikes that held those in are sticking out and why we didn't sink a boat this past year is um, interesting um, but I would suggest that um, at that time that should be corrected um, and I see it being written down <laughs> um, and then as far as the uh, it does uh, do runoffs on the side uh, but one of the issues is because people can afford a 2,000 horsepower outboard people are power, powering their boats up onto their uh, trailers mm -hmm. which is causing a big um, cavity at the end of the boat ramp, which I believe is how this whole issue started because it, it actually ended up going below the sheathing. Um, so, uh, and, and that marsh is, is headed towards Millie's. If you look at the, the crevice that shows in the photos there, it's a good uh, foot and a half to two feet wide at minimum. Um, and that's a far cry from what it was uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. You'll also note that at the end of the peninsula, there's now a gap there um, that's increasing. And um, that gap was created by a um, large uh, boater inboard that lost his linkage on a throttle, cut into that marsh, cut a big chunk out. In the last, this past winter, it's, it's caused an issue. Um, so uh, at some point, uh, and it's it's being exacerbated by people cutting through there with their boats going to get more. Um, so that should just be noted in the in what's there now. Um, and at some point, uh, I'm going to be coming back and asking what the town can do to facilitate um, the, the increased loss of that marsh uh, through this activity. This particular land um, used to be part of the family land. It was given by my grandfather to create this boat ramp. So um, the family has a vested interest in, in what it looks like, how it operates, and the safety of it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> you got the point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, Bill and I spoke on yeah. um, Monday. Yeah, there's some valid points. I, I I know that the situation with the lighting is a concern for us because we don't we tend to discourage lighting, especially in <coughs> wetland areas. And, but um, I understand the concern. Maybe something creative can be dealt with there if that's some. I mean, did the town think of having a, a camera there since it is pretty far away from the police station and doesn't get regular monitoring? Mm -hmm. It might be worth thinking about. I offered to provide uh, electricity and internet connection to the town several years ago. Oh. Um, maybe, it, uh, it is an issue. maybe so that the lighting isn't projected from that first pole, uh, second pole, or another pole at the end of the pier? Yeah. You could, with da just downward lighting, so it's not... <clears throat> it's dicey with illuminating the water. Well, it doesn't have to be at the end, but it is, it is a, a gangway that, that walks out there, so there's a safety issue. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, I'd rather not like see a light being projected on that first pole all the way down the length of the... Yeah. <clears throat> or the low level lighting. Like the end of the pier. And the town should have a mm. clear posting of hours that this is used, like that it's <laughs> off limits at night. You know, if that's when the riffraff's happening, it's bad news. That like those rules should be clearly posted somewhere. I don't know if they are. Yeah, it doesn't look like the marsh gets much protection other than those two posts, which is unfortunate. But you know, I don't think I'd want to encourage putting anything else in there that could have a diverse adverse effect. Other thoughts? Oh, um, no problem with the, the bulkhead being uh, reconstructed. The, my thoughts, 
are directly to the that stormwater issue and how maybe really this is if we just zoom through this, this is a lost opportunity, particularly you know in terms of prioritization. First and foremost, that catch basin right here, and getting a grease trap or whatever they have, similar to what the, the straight work folks are supposed to have in front of the AMP, all the AMP catch basins out there, and then there's a constant monitoring and replacement of that hazardous sort of a perm bill there that will actually catch some of that um, the fuel and some of the spills. I had a thought though also, and this is just out of the box, I don't even know, if you look at plate number nine, I think it was, um, I'm even gonna get there. It's the one that's focusing on the beach side. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the beach side and, um, if I can get there, sorry. Yeah, plate nine, so yeah. So if you look at, think of plate nine, there's, there's a, you could potentially use gravity to help you bring the water back um, on an angle through some sort of PVC piping along that bulkhead and then bring it back into here. Maybe towards some, land. And towards land and then mm -hmm. maybe do some sediment trapping there if you don't have the actual room here because if you're so close to the, to the water line. Just a thought. I don't know. I mean, I haven't <coughs> thought about that. But obviously this area itself is, is ripe for having it having this project connected to some sort of stormwater remediation element. The second, it might be a little bit out of scope of what Chuck wants, Chuck wants to do, but you know, the second is really dealing with that sheet runoff that's coming down F Street. Mm -hmm. And I agree, most of it's coming through, where am I? Coming down F Street and then kind of coming here. I can't remember if some actually hits the water column, the water um, face or not, or just kind of goes out here and then into the salt marsh here. But that, that this, and Millie Street Bridge, these are the only two main stormwater sort of uh, entering places for uh, right. Creek. As far as I can tell, I mean, there's nothing really at the, at the culvert going to Madigan Lane. <coughs> right. No, they got so much uh, stuff going on yeah, there. Yeah. This is really, this is the one, and, and, mm -hmm. and Millie's, and they did some augmentation to Millie's that really now direct some of that water <laughs> even more so, but they did, but that can be fixed, I think. Um, but this is, this is right, and whether, Chuck, want, you want to bring it into this project or not? Really, that this F Street runoff is right. The com this area definitely should be brought into this project. That, that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Interesting stuff. Okay. Any other public comments? <coughs> Jeff, we have everything we need? Well, no, uh, well we, no you got, we need more information. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. The filtering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, to continue for two weeks? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll continue for two weeks. Thank you. Can you share the outcome of that one? That uh, we're going to continue for two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Thank you. And with the coming back with information on the Yeah, the filtering, I think, is the most thing. Maybe some lighting? Lighting. And, can you guys give it a thought? See if bring something back in. Yeah, yeah. Sort of a large telephone pole, maybe street lamps or something lower. Maybe yeah. Up as well or mm -hmm. something. And I get it because a lot of guys are in and out of the girls. Um, I ran in and out there all the time. So, But I, I guess I was a little confused because a couple of the members were saying that they didn't want additional lighting by the water. Well, just yeah, creative lighting, I guess, is the best way to put it. We understand the Why safety you issue. Cal calculate so, yes and no. What okay. the, um, how the light will project from the current light course you have now and what area you need to cover with light. Like what is potentially left in darkness. There yeah, might I mean, not be much. Yeah, they have the darks all the time. If you walk down the piers, they have more, they're all low lighting. Right. There's yeah, going to be something just, that's yeah, kind of yeah, 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 just, all yeah. low lighting. Toe kick's not the right word, but you understand what I'm this saying. This pole was just going to be moved back landward about 10 feet. If we, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the thing the air is on that, but if that's improved or re angle provide well, a better pattern, would that be sufficient or are you looking for something additional? My only concern is if I look at something additional, I got to run conduit and, and now mm -hmm. see what the power requirements are. I, I know nothing about really what this light is or how power is fed. Well, we, want, we want downward lighting, first off. Nothing projected. So if you're trying to light the end of the pier from that post and you're moving the pole 10 feet further inland, you're, you're getting further away than something we're looking for. So you might have to think about 
when it's behind up on the pole at the end. All right, so right now there's no power at the end on this dock or anything? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, I think if you're coming up the grade and the bituminous material, you can definitely do a mm -hmm. conduit and get uh, the lighting up there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The estate of Lee Rand Byrne, 55 Grove Lane. Uh, for the applicant, Eric Gasparro, I'm before you tonight with a notice of intent for work within the buffer zone to our bordering vegetated wetlands. Uh, the project is um, essentially a residential redevelopment. We have an existing uh, residential use lot that contains uh, an existing structure and um, septic system served by on site water uh, there's a driveway and what we're proposing to do is to remove the existing structure and establish a building envelope for new structures the um, the building envelope that i've outlined is uh, is the green line on the plan which essentially matches the zoning setbacks and the 50-foot buffer zone and then shown in um, the dash dark line is the proposed silt fence and limit of work which has been set so as to maintain um, at least 50% of the area between the 25 and the 50 as um, uh, natural buffer zone. The uh, only waiver that we would request would be for separation distance of the bottom of the structures to, to groundwater and uh, any dewatering would be temporary and discharged in that uh, area which is outside of the 100 foot buffer zone and create a settling area up in the northwest corner of the property we are proposing that um, the septic system would be removed and the property would ultimately be tied to town sewer so we've shown a uh, sewer line that would run uh, down the, the 16 foot wide way which is labeled on the plan uh, out to grove lane um, and uh, again shown on the plan in blue is the border and vegetated well boundary delineated by Brian Madden and then in red is the 25 50 and 100 foot buffer zones um, with that I'd be happy to try to address questions or concerns that you may have we don't have excuse me any actual house plans at this point it's to essentially establish um, the envelope and we've designed and proposed this I believe in keeping with um, the expectations and performance standards and regulations of the commission. Are my question pertains to, I guess, the dirt driveway. Mm -hmm. um, because on one of the plans, you have the dash line for the proposed limit of work, and then the driveway is much closer to the wetland than that. So is that calculated in your percent coverage between the 25 and 50? Uh, that dirt driveway would be removed. Mm -hmm. that exists and so that's on the uh, essentially the um, wetland side of the fence so I think you'd have a significant net benefit there by having existing we, we don't show the location of proposed driveway mm -hmm. it would simply be upland of the established limit of work and the driveway that's shown on the plan within that area is existing and um, would be, could be replanted or you know allowed to grow back in it wouldn't it's not proposed to be continued in use so that we would have the 50 right. percent rule right so that big loop would be gone that's correct Basically. and the, the exact yeah. configuration of future driveways and landscaping mm -hmm. um would be subject to you know either a minor modification or <coughs> amendment for work in the buffer zone but we would simply be seeking to establish um the area essentially to the to the northwest of the dashed line for the residential redevelopment of the property yeah. Yeah, it's wet back there well Ed, we have <coughs> I mean we have confirmed that wetland boundary so We literally have no driveway design or, you know, and even 
I would say at this point, yeah. whether you did or you didn't, because of being greater than 25 feet and then plus the 50% of the other area, I don't know that such a detail really would. Um, here because it says to improve to grab along. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry for the for the existing driveway running along. Um, no, I, we haven't didn't really, you know, consider um, proposing any kind of steel edging or any real I just wanted to make sure that it could be uh, stabilized and you know it, there's a driveway that's there right now it's just it's dirt and rutted so it's just to make sure that it's stable for access going forward any questions kind of vague at this point <laughs> but you'll be back in front of us with a and hopefully yeah, just a, maybe a minor mod if, yeah. you know for a final design given that um uh you know we're maintaining and meeting all the standards yeah. the waivers. real quick but before we go actually you can go ahead <laughs> catch up okay uh, any questions from the public all right i do have something from the public oh please um so it just came in late this afternoon um that a uh, Bob and Mary man at 58 Grove Lane had concerns uh, related to the work and their comment was that there is need for much greater clarity regarding the sewer and sustainable protection of the surrounding flora and fauna with construction of larger structures and a pool respectfully Mary man so they weren't able to attend so they just wanted to uh, the sewer would be low pressure sewer force main sewer. We're talking about the installation of an inch and a half diameter line um, down the driveway yeah. that exists. Uh, and a three foot trench, mini right. excavator, not any kind of um, low impact. Low right, we're not putting right. in, um, you know, there's already a, a water service through there. Um, you know, we could certainly put, uh, agree to additional silt to. to to install siltation fencing on the edge of that driveway, that might help. To, yeah. Which I show it stopping here, but um, we could certainly agree to run that out along that wetland edge down to Grove Lane. I think that actually, I, I should have shown that, and I think that's very reasonable condition. So it's, I'm confused here. So right now it says a 16 foot wide driveway and then you say to be <coughs> approved to 12 feet uh, the 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 way the, the way. legal way the is, legal okay. way is 16 feet wide gotcha. and um, the traveled way gotcha. would be 12 to me yeah just to make sure a fire truck yeah get up in there if it needed to yeah okay. okay having been up there I'd say the driveway currently is very variable in width for vegetation yeah. and things yeah. <coughs> it's kind of a hodgepodge. And I guess who's ever widening it, like in the silt fence that you put in, will be important so it doesn't that's right. widen yeah, the wrong that's way. That's right. We would be, you know, when it says widening, it's more probably of a normalizing mm -hmm. of, you know, the variable with just as you're doing a project like this, you're going to come in. And so I just want to be sure that as we do the permitting, that it's understood that it's not a um, uh, large scale change from existing conditions, but certainly given the wetland along the side and um, a condition that the silt fence would be run, you know, out to Grove Lane, I think should be towed in and subject to the proper installation methods of the way the silt fence should be put in. I'm assuming it's wetland on both sides of that road. It's yeah. pretty much just a filth, yeah. Okay, so to no more questions from the public, no more questions from the commission. Jeff, we have everything you need on this? We do. Okay. Motion to close. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dwartsky, Baines Family Trust, A. Chakamo Road. Good evening, uh, David Haynes for the applicant. Um, this is a restoration project of the vegetative buffer 
um, a few months, a couple of months ago, you did a certificate of compliance for for this property, and part of the original order of conditions required uh, destroying the 25-foot vegetative buffer. It wasn't done. You very nicely, I believe, gave the certificate of compliance, but required that we come back in with a notice of intent since the ordinary required. I wasn't here, so I'm had to uh, say how that was pushed along. Um, what what we have done? Okay, this was an order of conditions that was issued in 2002 for a delineation that was done at that time. We have since re-delineated the, the bordering vegetated wetland. It's higher than the original one. There were some so there were some walking paths that were allowed to restore uh, to. Uh, Reestablish themselves as, as natural vegetation and um, various other things. I'm getting older and don't walk in the woods as much, <laughs> on the slope as much. So I, it is a little bit higher, so it is going to be a more conservative vegetated buffer than, than you were going to, you would have gotten off the old delineation. Also, the coastal bank uh, has been, there's been some more topography done than there was originally and found an area that was considered to be a coastal bank by policy, and we've included that. A portion of that is actually in an, an existing mode area. That will be replanted, as will the vegetated buffer. Um, there is a split rail fence that is shown on the plan that is in there. That is to be removed and either relocated outside of the 25 or, or not put in at all. Um, so that that is that is an option uh, that we that actually we haven't been able to get a hold of the applicant to find out if we want to have it or not. So we'd like to have it left open if that is okay with you. A portion of the site, a portion of the work area, is within uh, natural heritage uh, habitat, and so the activity because it is maintained lawn is actually exempt from MISA, but we have sent it into Natural Heritage to get an opinion to make sure they agree with that or to get a ruling from them as to whether or not it will impact. So we are going to ask for a continuous in length to get our 30 days of Natural Heritage uh, taken care of. Um, the stippled area on the plan is going to be replanted uh, with a combination of winterberry holly, high bush blueberry, and arrowwood. Uh, 8 to 10 feet on center, uh, 18 to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's on, it was eight to 10 feet. yeah, to um, but 18, 18 to 36 high plants will be put in there. Any disturbed soils will be seeded with a, with a drought tolerant conservation mix and um, we will try to maintain any of the grasses that are there, and, and then the area will be allowed to naturalize. So a native conservation mix? Yeah, I mean, as native as you guys have a, <laughs> a good one, it's always been. I'd rather see plugs going in between shrubs, because the studies just, they show the seed mix as well. Well, Colonize. the, I mean, what's in there, okay, the, uh, most of it is, it's just going to be the, the only disturbance is going to be the hole for the plants in the plants. Um, question for you, and it might not be able to answer this. Is this porcelain berry or is this grape that's coming over the fence? It almost looks great. It is? Yeah. Okay. I believe that just look <laughs> pointy enough that. Impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of grape in there. Yeah. There may be there may be some porcelain. If it was porcelain berry, we want to get it yeah, it's, out. It's, it, there's a lot of grape. Yeah. On that, it would be good to try to source some a good native mix for Nantucket. Man, I don't know. You yeah. pointed. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Where did you get one? Yeah, nowhere around. I mean, we've been asking, we've, this question has gone for this board. Yeah. We'd have to get Land Bank or Conservation Foundation to start harvesting. <laughs> Well, they used to sell little, I mean, right. little packets of native seed mix, but they were something that were they were not going to do a landscape level, you know, even a, right. this little garden stuff. I think, you know, I mean, you've got such a want to put 
put that fence, well, I'll talk about whether to keep it or not, but I think we probably want to mark that, delineate that air, that air so it doesn't get mowed down the road. I would, I would probably think they would do it in straight sections, and so they would be yeah. farther, you know, they'd be, exactly. you know, go out like that and then go down like this and then yeah. over like that and over like that, and so you would actually get more. Yeah. I would think, I mean, they have, it seemed to have split rail around the whole house, so it, this is, they like are, it, they might. These, these are new owners. Yeah, well, so that might, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And it was the, to close the deal to get new Right, owners. I remember it. Yep. Sarah Alger made a lot of promises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a call. Well, this, is what we're, this is what we're here for, right? Is this oh, yeah. this is to more? release her from being indebted to the commission. <laughs> 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 he apologizes for not being here. Oh, I'll remember. <laughs> so we do need a continuance uh, for, to allow natural heritage to run there for us. Okay. Do you have any other comments that you want me to address on the plans? Maybe add some clapper on to your plan on that? Add some, some clapper on? I could do that. Um, there isn't clutter in that on that site as I remember, but we can add it. Well, it's nowhere on the other site. No, I mean I'm sure there's. I, I don't remember it being down. There is clutter in that general region. Yeah, for sure. We can we, we can add that. I don't think you'd be bringing it somewhere new on that time. Okay. Well, is there any uh, public comment on this one? Nice timing. I was looking like I wanted to say something. I'm up here. This is great. And then I'm really done. Good. No, no, no. This is restoration. This one. Cormac Hall here at the Land Council. I didn't really go over the restoration documents in terms of the plant species, but I'm sure you guys are all set with that. So I am trying to come up with more ideas, more ways we can encapsulate our fertilizer regulations into some policy decisions permitting decisions and education and awareness. And I thought um, that potentially, and even more so now that they're trying to get a certificate of compliance, they might be trying to sell the property. They already have a certificate and they already have sold Okay, so that gigantic lawn might even be more improved than it already is uh, right now and might be changing um, landscapers and whatnot. And I think I would request that in your order of conditions, for the life of the permit for three years that the landscape board would have to provide all fertilizer regulations up to 100 feet, not just for the restoration area. We're not proposing any fertilizer in the restoration area. Yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm trying to encapsulate, I'm trying to encapsulate this lawn and forever, whatever that will do, it'll get the new owner aware of the regs and aware they have to comply and their landscaper to comply. Right from the get -go right from the get-go. Um, if you zoom out, just a quick, if you zoom out on the locust map, this is basically the terminal end of that valley as it comes down um, Moore's End Farm, Gardner, um, that whole area coming down right through. And then you get into the, the estuary here, and this is actually where the um, Jeff and the, 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 um, the staff has set up their oyster reef restoration site. So this is really one yeah. of these pivotal that points yeah. of entry for pollutions and nitrogen into the harbor. So. One of those key hotspots we're trying to focus on. If you could, if you could put it in the regs, I think it'd be a great step for them to submit the record right. of the fertilizer, and then Jeff can work with them if he sees this doesn't work. This isn't the right fertilizer. I like it. Cool. Thank you. How about it. Good deal. Okay. So we'd like to uh, continue. Yes. Yes, please. Any other comments? Okay. So we'll continue for two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. We're gonna have to have two meetings on that. Yeah. Week of the 23rd. Oh, Did I mention that we're still going to be here? Anywhere we're here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Camadiff LLC, 32 Dukes Road. No problem. Thanks, David. tonight with a uh, to represent a notice of intent filed by Jeff Blackwell 
uh, for uh, residential development on a currently uh, vacant lot on Dukes Road with uh, proposing work within the buffer zone to two uh, bordering vegetated wetlands. Uh, the vegetated wetlands are on the opposite side of Dukes Road and the opposite side of a neighbor's driveway. Um, the work is to uh, essentially, you know, complete residential development, including uh, the construction of a dwelling, swimming pool, uh, landscape features, uh, including patios and um, retaining walls, steps, and uh, in the driveway. The um, property would be served by town sewer, low pressure sewer system, uh, which is in the road. We'd be installing a uh, grinder pump. And there is a well also proposed uh, on the property within the buffer zone. The, uh, the house itself uh, is proposed outside of the uh, 50 foot buffer zone. A waiver has been requested for the separation distance to groundwater. Um, the calculated separation is about 10 inches from the bottom of footing to, uh, to the high groundwater. And uh, a waiver has also been requested to allow uh, the stone retaining wall or the retaining walls um, within the 50 foot buffer zone as well. And the basis for that waiver is the provision which allows the commission to grant a waiver when portions of the buffer zone are altered and outside of the control, um, including vehicular access ways such as this, where you have um, both Dukes Road and the driveway uh, within probably 10 feet of the vegetated wetland which can't be controlled by the applicant so uh, again it does not seem that a, a retaining wall uh, located greater than 40 feet away from that resource area is going to have an adverse impact on the protected interests and uh, with that I'd be happy to try to address questions concerns that you may have with the project hmm. so Sarah was this land just subdivided you know, I'm not sure though. When I look on the, I, I don't think so. That but I don't know lot. because when I look on the GIS, it appeared that the lots had been created for some time. Oh, and yeah. I, 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 it could have been lot line alteration. Yeah. Uh, I would say no, based on the plan reference here, mm -hmm. of Plan File Seven A, which is old. old. Mm -hmm. Um, and Plan File Seven A, yeah, no, that's okay. an old, that's an old subdivision. That's a really old subdivision. Yeah. And they're going for a full basement there? Yes. <laughs> it's wet. Never gonna fly. <laughs> it's so wet down there. I mean. Uh, there, is an, there is a portion of the property that's outside of the buffer zone where yeah. they could, you know, put in some yeah. pump, pump too. So they're not gonna obviously pump up to, to the road. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a big concern of mine. I know that the neighbors across the street have serious water issues in their crawl space. Uh -huh. And they and properties across the way are pumping their basements out and it's making that wetland just overflow last year especially. And it just sort of it's pumping to continue to Oh, it's just the water's just coming up and coming up and it's a real problem for anyone down downhill. So any type of catch basin type system or whatever yeah we would propose would no really good uh, discharge within mm -hmm. the buffer zone do you know that do you have a height to groundwater in this area yeah Jeff included it in his yeah. um, waiver <coughs> request I don't know that he gave you all of the information but his projection was the 10 inch separation I could we could certainly get you that information I, I don't have that but he clearly has the yeah. data and what he mentions in his letter is that they, um, uh, you can see that the house and this part of the need for the retaining walls, uh, the fill, is that they uh, lifted so that up yeah. in order to get that separation distance in an effort mm -hmm. to keep uh, the footings in the house out of that groundwater. He doesn't label a, um, a top of foundation, but uh, I can see that, you know, with a proposed grade of 23 around, it's probably 24 to 25. Mm -hmm. And um, there are spot elevations, you know, near the edge of the wetland, 17 here. So, um, he's coming up 
Yeah, so maybe it does. You know, I, I, I we'd have to get you more information. Yeah, about that. I mean, but always he been, did study and project it. Always been curious if that was like just a perched wetland, just a ton of clay in there or something, but <clears throat> maybe not. Um, other questions? That's something else in my mind. Um, Yeah. Um, Standard pool conditions. Yeah. Would be acceptable. I mean, you've got a lot of hardscape and just anything to kind of control any runoff on the property. Do we have a waiver request for the pool installation as well as that to be sort of covered in both? Right. To the bottom of the structures, yeah. yes. Oh, I know I had a question. Um, the we haven't signed off in the sewer line on that street yet. That is correct. How does that all working out for these projects like this? I guess they're kind of in limbo because he doesn't have other op options. Well, that's kind of with, with David Gray. Yeah, their exactly. Program at the moment for mm -hmm. what's going on there, but we're kind of carrying on business as normal as far as right. permitting. And at some point they'll be back. I know David's working with them to, to get that squared away. Right. At some point it will be squared away. It's going to have to be at some point. <coughs> so, any questions from the public on this? No? no more questions from the commission? Well, I guess what concerns me, because we do grant these waivers mm -hmm. a lot, is we continue to have winters with high groundwater and then 10 inches separation. Um, it's not a lot. No. And I really question whether we should be granting these because even if they're pumping out of their basement, that water is ultimately going to add back to the yeah. water table. You I know, mean, so we probably shouldn't be building near it. You can make a tight basement, but it's pricey. That's an engineering thing. Yeah, certainly. I mean, there are there is there is water proofing, and then yeah. there is. Damp proofing, right? You know, there's different variations, yeah. right? That can be and done, but still within the water, um, yeah. displacing and making other basements flood. Yeah. Like we need to be out of it. I think that was the effort to to Going raise up. this whole thing, right? So that if, you know, even if it uh, on a seasonal basis was a occurrence, it wouldn't be a situation where this is always in the groundwater. And I think it's spotty because I know that the neighbors next door have a basement apartment and probably a little higher up than that one, but doesn't have an issue. But the one next door at the same elevation seems to have a huge issue. So it could just be clay or poor construction. Yeah, I mean, the grade really comes up as you go in the back and yeah, you see that it's showing. really steep. Right. Any other questions or concerns? We have everything we need, he said, yeah? All right, would you like to close? Yes, please. Motion to close. Uh, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Amended orders. Oh, your own risk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. More of these Amended I've orders. Grell, 21 land. Field <laughs> Avenue. Yeah, I was like trying to figure out who's building on Duke's Road. <laughs> On behalf of the applicant, um, Till, Tim, and Susan Grell, uh, this is an application for an amended order of conditions um, for uh, the relocation of an existing driveway, installation of a pool, and associating uh, fencing, landscaping, and utilities uh, within this particular site. Uh, this is an existing uh, residential site at the corner, essentially at the intersection of Field Ave, Folder Ave, and Morgan Square. 
uh, in which we were for you uh, maybe less than a year ago for some modifications to that existing dwelling, which involved uh, adding, uh, extending the porch off of the southerly uh, building face and um, some in some relocation of entryways and so forth on the existing dwelling. Uh, back about three or four years ago, the application was before you in which they did a septic uh, repair on the subject property. Um, this application proposes to relocate the existing driveway that is located at the kind of at the intersection of Morgan Square and Field Avenue to the north of the property, um, to the northerly side of the property, to line up with the the existing doorways that have been relocated as part of our last notice of intent. The site itself has actually um, been recently put into the sewer district and the current work that you just approved over on the two lots on Morgan Square, I believe that, I believe they were, um, they're actually running the sewer line to that property down Field Avenue and tying into the sewer line, an existing sewer line further to the north. So we are actually going to take and connect, and we'll come in with another amendment once that happens. But we're going to connect the abandon the existing septic system and tie this into the into the town sewer. So we'll be eliminating the septic system component of this property. Right now, the septic system is actually tucked up in this uh, corner of the property, right along Field Avenue, which is just outside the hundred. Um, but we will be able to eliminate that eliminate that septic system. Um, so really, the main Thing before you, I think here is is the, the addition of a small um, small width pool, 12 feet by 35 foot in length. Um, it'll be located to the um, easterly portion of the property adjacent to Field Avenue. Uh, it's outside of the 50 foot um, no build, albeit and it is does occur when an area. If you see the photos on the site, that's basically already a developed portion of the of the lot. Uh, grade change will be minimal. It'll basically be built to the, the, the grade that is out there now. Um, the property itself does have perimeter fencing. It has post and rail fencing on the perimeter, essentially uh, with the pond acting as a buffer uh, to the west. However, there will be a standard one of the uh, auto covers in this particular area. So we're not proposing any new fencing um, on the project, but there is a post and rail fence that surrounds the property um, uh, that presently exists basically from the pond all the way up along the street, the street line. The uh, have asked for a waiver with regard to groundwater, whereas the pool would not be constructed in within groundwater, uh, but based on the groundwater testing that was done for the septic system based on where the elevation of the pond is, um, the pool itself would be about three foot in the deep end, probably approximately seven feet or so um, in the seven to eight feet in the, the deep end. So there would be um, a portion of that deeper end only uh, that would probably be within two feet of groundwater, approximately a foot to a foot and a half above it. It would not be in the groundwater though, based on the, the testing that we have. Um, and that would simply be so there'd be no you know, long-term need for dewatering. It wouldn't have to be an engineered um, pool, if you will, be constructed within the, within the groundwater table. Um, the application itself, um, as I said, I have set forth the um, a waiver request. And again, we're doing this as an amended order for the existing order of conditions, um, whereas the work has been done under that original order of conditions, but we have not closed out that permit yet. So we've done this as an amended order of conditions. <coughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have relative uh, to the application. The site itself is, for all practical purposes, completely within the 100 foot buffer zone to the pond. I mean, the, the, with the exception of a small sliver over here, the, the entire site is within, within 100 feet of the pond. And the grade of the site is from Field Avenue straight. It's, it's, it's basically graded east to west um, in the general vicinity of the pond. The Morgan Square <coughs> properties that are being developed now are to the south and they're right over here. Sewer line is going to run down, run down Field Avenue. Right, so, um, and not a lot of hardscaping. There's not really any. Essentially, there's, it's the pool with, with a small coping around it. There's no, uh, it, you know, no large hardscape involved with, the, with, the, with it itself. It's basically connected to the existing deck. 
So I guess my question pertains to um, this letter, I guess, from the Callahans and some of the photos that look like there's been some clearing around the pond yeah. and some of the tree work. Mm -hmm. How are we going to demarcate that so that that does not happen? Okay, well, two things. Um, we have got, we've delineated the 25 foot no disturb zone is going to be set with permanent markers. Um, that, this issue was raised actually previously by another rebutter at that time and I think, actually I think Jeff might have been on the site with, with Mr. Grell back a year or so ago. I think it's the same issues that were raised. Um, it's, there's been no, it's basically limb work. Is but it, The thing is that, so snags and dead trees, they're really important for yeah. habitat function. So, so, so I think, and Tim has responded, that was provided to us. I, I, I saw it after the, you know, prior to the last meeting that I asked for a continuance. But I believe Mr. Grell has reached out to Joe. I think he's reached out to the commission. He's fully aware of not only this letter now, the, the prior complaint that we had, um, he would like to do some cleaning along the, the Folger Avenue side, but is completely aware that he can't do anything without a, an amendment to the permit or filing some type of invasive removal or something along that line. Um, as I said, there's been no machine work, but it, there has been there has been clearing out there. There's been a limbing of trees. There's that's been how it starts, you know, and that, so um, yeah, and some of the rest of it too. That's been cut on along the along the road along Field Ave. Um, and Morgan Square. Uh, some of it has also been off-site and has been yeah. unrelated to this property, but to a different property. Um, we've been slowly picking up the owners one by one to go through it. Um, there's some other issues with the, the Morgan Square end and that road crossing where it crosses kind of between the two segments of pond that are there. That's kind of a mess but no one wants to take responsibility for fixing that, so. So is this something that we need all property owners who border these areas to take really detailed photos before to show like, hey, this is a complete buffer, no view shed to the pond, so that right when clearing starts, it's like, oh no, you cleared this. Because this is the time that they're in front of us that we have that initial evidence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be helpful in some cases. I mean, some of this one, I mean, we've been out to this site and a couple of the other ones, and it's just, I think Paul will agree. You can go out there and it, you can never tell what's going on. It's very difficult to, to see differences. I mean, we've even compared photos that we've taken on site visits to additional photos, and it doesn't appear that there's significant differences between the two. But it's just a matter of when that work is going on and when you're picking it up and when you're catching it. This Was this the um, property, I think it was Will Stevens that brought it to our attention? Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And there was a bunch of clearing that <clears throat> happened down toward the pond and maybe the installation of that platform. No, that, that, platform's, on that platform's, platform's always been there. Always been there. I, yeah. I remember hearing something about the platform. Maybe that's yeah. been there, but yeah. there was a, some additional clearing. Yeah. I think the clearing exposed the platform. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I first came onto the site when this owner was looking to purchase it. And to me, like I said, I was taken aback when Will first came at that last meeting. He kind of caught me off guard because the site, to me, never looked any different than what it I'd always looked like when I was there. So, you know, um, then this one came about, too. In fact, I reached out to Will before this, before I continued last meeting. I said, you know, we're back. You got any concerns? Let me know. And he didn't have any concerns specifically. Um, and then all of a sudden, we get the letter from you know, from the county. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was... You know, I mean, that's, that, that's been our issues. We've gone out. I mean, in the last two years, we've probably been on site here probably eight times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's weird. Joanne said it the other day. It's like watching your kids grow because you don't notice they've grown yeah. or changed that much. <laughs> but then when your grandparents come and visit and they're like, oh, my God, you're a foot taller. It's the same thing here where you don't, you don't see it. But then when someone who doesn't see it very often yeah. goes to look at it, they're like, it's very different. Mm -hmm. It's so I agree. I think Ashley's got a good point that it's something we're up front, some sort of. Well, I it's think weird to say photographic as like, built yeah, of what's there. Trying to pull up a 1978 shot of it, probably. And, the, yeah. and the, like I said, the 25 foot note. We, we had on the original the past order because of the what Will brought up. You know, we did we yeah. said that demarcating the 25 foot. Yeah. And that you know that they've just got to know that they can't. 
but they, they yeah. know. I know. They say, hey, go out there on Sunday when nobody's looking. Like, make sure there's no cars yeah. in the road. So, like, maybe they need to restore on this platform where it was uncovered. Like, I think we really need to hammer it home with people. Um, or these resources are going to get destroyed little by little, and you won't realize until your kid's a foot taller. <laughs> Don't Same thing, yeah. Oh, this is a puddle. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm fine. You can, you can. Uh, these are interesting pictures. This the cereal is this like yeah. a drone or something? Yeah, you got a drone. Drone. Yeah, yeah. Must have, yeah. Yeah. the drone. drone. Okay. <laughs> Questions from yeah, the public. Yeah, so onto the drone. Um, <laughs> onto the drone. Onto the drone. If you get those drone shots up yeah. there, and you know, I understand the, the, this incremental cutting Look, here. Look, there's a guy with chainsaw. Oh. Over all but, the trees. but I'm trying to line this these drone shots up with the aerials this is drastic this is yeah, drastic, this is drastic. so it's sort of a it sort of seems that this i haven't been out there so i don't know exactly but if i'm just looking these at these drones and this was vegetated i would be surprised why you wouldn't issue an enforcement order tomorrow to require them to come in to restore the 25 foot area where the lawn is where that lawn is, um, it looks like they've cleared well, under like all the trees. So you see, so I mean, this is cleared underneath, like underneath the pine trees. Under. But just, just this Hard entire twenty-five foot area. The, if it's not pre-existing, it's not pre-existing. Oh, that's pre-existing. Well, the twenty-five the 20 is pre-existing. This, this, this the, the lawn is. <laughs> yeah. So they need to restore the shrub layer, which looks like it's been. If the shrub layer is this area, I think it's that area right there. Actually, I think yeah, that's, that looks that right there. But even this right under here. like this group this, of signs. This, this, yeah, but that the lawn itself has never been that's that's hasn't been altered. See, like I said, I was on the site when he first bought it. That's the same lawn area that was there when I was upset upon. Paul, it even so, looks dicey yeah. over here, like they cleared under the trees. Oh yeah, no, I, I think yeah. part of it over there too. And, and you can it's limbs. You can see some of the limbs yeah. over there. So yeah. yeah. And I think that's what Will was probably talking about at the time. But but like I said, it's, it's just you don't and I don't know if he has dates on these. This is 2016. Well, I think he was the broker on those. And one so says 2018. <laughs> one says 2018. So, well, maybe a lost opportunity for that lawn in terms of getting some restoration there, but. I don't want to see that day. Um, it's definitely. I don't know. I don't know, Paul. It just seems. It just seems that there's a lot of a lot of disturbance in oh. that 25 foot area that yeah. maybe, unfortunately, your your new owner is inheriting, but. Um, um, it's hard to tell because the coloring is so different. Like it's I don't weird. know what the date of this one is and the date of that one is because the trees are all like that tree is still here. This, these, tr you know, and it's just. I think we should look at this. I, yeah. With the exception, I know there's one stump out there. I, I know that's all. I, you know, there's one because I've got a. I used it for my for benchmark. I mean, there might be a happy medium if, he, if he's if he's willing to do some restoration. Oh, I think he would. Yeah. I think that's his. I think not just not just yeah. demarcate, yeah. but actual restoration. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I think the easy way is to simply just memorialize demarcating the 25 and then letting the areas on the other side of it, with probably an exception to get to the platform, just revegetate, just leave it alone. No more cutting, no more maintenance, and just saying that's the end. That's just what it is. I mean, I think having a, a path to the float is, or platform or whatever it is, is is fair, mm -hmm. but then just demarcate the 25 and it has to go. And then you have to do monitoring to demonstrate that you're not doing any work inside of it anymore. I think that's the easiest way to deal with it and to be done with it once and for all. I, I, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I, I definitely would agree. And then it would just be a question of demarcation. For some of our CRs, we pull out this split rail fence, which mm -hmm. works if people are okay with that. If yeah. they're not okay with a split rail fence right in front of their yard between the pond. But really, a split rail fence is the easiest thing to demarcate that 25-foot right. line. And then you know you're not supposed to touch anything, and you're supposed to let it regrow. And after 10, 15 years, hopefully it'll look old. You know. What yeah. else do you guys use, or what else is The split rail is the, is the most visibly it's, it's most present visible. thing yeah. that they yeah. know they're not yeah. supposed to go mm -hmm. beyond. We've done like, short uh, stubs. We've done 4x4, four or 4x4 four, yeah. uh, four four even bigger posts from here to the exit sign. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Right. Posts and rocks. Yeah. I, I would agree that split rail, having the horizontal barrier is is works the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they got lots of split rail, so they like split rail. So. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I just do want to make sure that they, it just looks dicey that they're clearing stuff further back into the pond. Yeah, I think the implication of the letter was that this area would be included to improve the, this, the view to the pond over here, I think is what it was. That's nice. yeah. It just seems like in the GIS photos, there's, there's been a drastic change. Yeah. You guys can certainly condition that, and then if that's unacceptable, they can always try to come back an amendment and explain why they they can't. Yeah, and I guess monitoring for vegetation. Yeah, they could condition just like any other restoration. So, do we want them to come back with a restoration schedule plan? So. Sounds like. Well, what's what are we asking we for? Make them restored, or should we just make them demarcated and let alone let it? But do you think it will come back? Well, without going out there and seeing. Yeah, part of me. Was it grubbed or? Would like to see what this looks no. like. So it's just a, so. Hand. I mean, it was hand. It looks like it was hand. Yeah, this is clean under those trees, though. So. Well, how about and the? Once you clean it once, then the eye wants it that clean every time. <coughs> it's going to be tough for the owner and landscaper to leave this alone. <laughs> tough for the landscaper to leave it alone. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, then if it's like the area, say, to the west of the house, um, that's definitely been cleared. You said it's just been surface cut. That hasn't been grubbed. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we could still see what comes back, just to note it. I would, I could state that 25 prior to the next meeting, and we could, you know, then maybe even make an adjustment out there based on it. Because there might be some areas that are obviously have been that way for some time. Mm -hmm. But then you can visually see the 25. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, <coughs> you know, put it on the agenda for the next, you know, however, you, however you'd like to do it. You know. What's the general feeling? Um, I think my feeling is that we have them put up a barrier of some sort on the 25, and provided that the area hasn't been grubbed, probably be more successful growing the native vegetation back. Uh, trying to plant something that may or may not be successful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, it probably isn't really native. Yeah, I mean, if it's just right, if it's just been well, cut I down. can tell you that the the most common plant in that whole general area is poison ivy. Yeah, uh, uh, it'll be back pretty quickly. Uh, <laughs> that's um, what that great coloring is. The only reason, and I guess I could go out here on my own at some point. I think a site visit might be good. Is if this is changing little by little over time, like we should all have a visual of it now on the ground. Um, but again, I can go on my. I mean, I would mind. I would mind seeing it. Honestly, yeah, I'm with you. I would mind seeing this. Sure. We'll make a schedule for next. Okay. Yeah, so why don't we? Yeah. Why not? I'll, I'll, we'll take the twenty-five, yeah. and we'll do the next your next site visit. This will be on your list. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. then you can always good. adjust that. Twenty, you know, because then it may be that the twenty-five. Well, listen, this area's probably already been developed. We put the fencing. We, we do something along that line. Yeah, we'll look at so, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, do something along that line. Which, which, as a reminder for everyone, our next field visits are actually on Tuesday, Tuesday, the twenty-second, because that Monday is Martin Luther King holiday. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue for yes. two weeks on. Yeah, perfect. Was there a question? No. <laughs> Thank you much. Right. Thank you. Bye, Cormac. Thanks. See you, Cormac. Okay. All right, 22nd, Tuesday, 3 yep. o'clock? Okay. Yes, 22nd. And that's 4 o'clock? 3. 3 o'clock. Oh, 3 o'clock. 22nd. 4 o'clock. Three headlines. Not yet. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's right. Okay. All right, good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, minor mods. Henry 59 Swam Road. We just did that. No, we did not. No, no we did not. Okay. We're there now. We're there now. Oh, go for it. Yeah. Number two. Okay. Uh, this is a minor modification request um, on a order of conditions that we recently obtained for uh, 59 Squam Road, mm -hmm. which was the uh, proposal of a secondary dwelling. Um, in a pool on a large parcel of land which fronts on Squam and goes all the way out um, to the ocean. Uh, Henry family, been in the family for some a number of years. 
and um, this was the one where we had a vegetated uh, kind of swale that we had built. This isn't well, the only wetland resource area is that there's this isolated wetland uh, that was located on the property in this vicinity here. It's a small isolated wetland. Uh, what the application is, is this back area was a wraparound porch along the back side of the structure. We're just looking to do a bump out on the small portion of the back side, approximately eight feet on the back side of the porch. Um, your application has a plan. This is the, it's scalloped in red on your plan here. So if this was a straight across, it's just a bump out along the back side of the, uh, of the structure. Pool is here, structure is here. There's the bump out. So, and that's the, the, the gist of the application. It's approximately eight, eight feet outside the 50 foot setback um, within an area that was already designated as developed lawn area. And that's it. Questions? Any thoughts? Questions? None here. No. Okay. Someone like to make a motion? Uh, yep, vote to issue. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. I'll be passing. Well, and if you go back on that, I'll see if I can get Mr. Will up here for that meeting too. Oh, oh cool. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Orders and conditions. Waypoint LLC. Yes. Was arts project for the addition to the pocket our neighbors install? Yeah, it's just really long. Sorry, but it's that same <laughs> kind of mirrors the rest of them the rest go to the of end. Oh, with that reflected change of the synthetic netting being replaced by the core blanket. So I, I think we should add. <clears throat> did you add something that these will be? Tagged and cataloged. Yes. Is that in there somewhere? Yes. Looks like I need to get a little bit. No. Well, sadly enough, I write too many of them to, unfortunately, have them all memorized. Second. What number is that? Thirty-one forty-four. Sorry, that's why I can't find it. <coughs> yes. Yeah, the all structural materials such as core logs, post and anchors shall be marked for identification. Um, I, I would add on to that just to kind of give them a list of all installed materials shall be provided to the commission uh, upon completion. Um, maybe with the property address or something. Mark for identification with the property address, right? So that is always sort of memorialized. Yeah, that is a flat no, number just, or something. Just real quick, just for clarity, when you guys mark those, do you guys have a unique identifier by, by project or by address? By address. All right, so yeah. it's already on there. DNA Yeah, but it's yeah. specific to a yeah. location. Well, why don't we just add all structural materials, public posts and anchors, shall be uh, marked for identification uh, with markings unique to the project. And well, that way, if for 71 Pacoma Road, if they put 71 PLRO or whatever they want to put for it, and they have a listing and they provide us at the end that that's what it's labeled. That's what it is. Then, all right. As long as there's something. That's fine. <laughs> Most of them I've seen are, are all Family just, crest. Are, are usually they just put, you know, we'll put like, just, you know, this one will probably be like 71 Pacamo or something like that. It's usually what they are. It's usually nothing fancy. Do you think that's a parcel? 
What's that? Map, map and parcel. That'd be good idea. They could. Yeah. Put the home on his phone on that so they can get all these phone calls. Yeah. Hey, it pieces in my yard. <laughs> the problem with map and parcel is unless you're like here or the land surveyor or the people working on it, no one actually has any idea what their map and parcel is. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I, would, I would dare any of you to tell me what map and parcel you live in. Yeah. No one will know. And I, just, I just did a permit on my house and I can't remember. Sorry, I don't know mine either. So, sir. <laughs> Everything else in there is kind of up to, up to date, standard stuff? Yes. Yeah, usually when I write the ones for the projects that are kind of continuing, because I usually start from the last one that we did. Yeah. But if we went back to the original one at 48 Shimo, it would probably look much different than what this right. one does. All right. So move to issue is what amended. Crossing, what about crossing properties? Are we going to worry about that or no? That's, that's, that's really in our purview. Problem. That is really not our problem. Okay. <laughs> if they're saying that they're going to get to the site by that means, if they trespass to do it, that is a. Okay. It's an interesting. It's a possible snafu, mess. but I don't know that it's our, in our purview, really. Nope. Well, they, they are telling us that they are going to deliver sand to a site and material to a site. They are obligated to do so in a legal manner. So, Tom Tom said we could do this. So that is up yeah. to them. They, they can own to, where can somebody own to mean high water? Mean high and and all of these projects are proposed to be delivering sand oh, above yeah, the yeah. well, no, yeah. nothing over the now if you're the one the rub <laughs> for snicking you could say that right you got one guy that, the one uh, well, you could also try to go through the <laughs> I'm I'm traveling in the intertidal zone with my right to fish foul navigate or stroll you try to claim that you're not there are lots of shenanigans to get into with it with a big truck <laughs> I fish for my excavator. I will also say, too, in all of the years we've had these projects, um, this is the one time that there's been a complaint. Most people, I think, understand, especially in that area, that yeah. at some point that they are probably going to be here with Join Paul or Art applying yeah. for a Join project or doing something where they're going to need access yeah. on the beach. Well, be so they anymore. usually That'll are... Pretty cooperative, stone. so it's a finely balanced system. Yeah, yeah. The gentleman on uh, <clears throat> Hinkley there, or I'm not even sure, he may be on Kimball. He is a little bit more, a little more fiery than some of the rest of the folks there. <laughs> Good way. <laughs> I feel you're being well, too kind. Well, okay, sorry to interrupt. My luck is he's no, watching no, right now, and he's going to come and yell and scream at me again. So, <clears throat> all right. So, okay, move we, to issue as amended. Do we have a second? Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yeah, I'm passing unanimously. Continued Grove Lane. And yeah, we got the Clark Fork Partners on the address. Yep, Clark Fork 17. Kimble. 17 Kimball. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Fence. Yeah, the same for fencing. <sighs> so this is a much more watered down version of the last order that you guys kind of looked at. Yeah. <clears throat> but a lot of the same components where the materials still have to be marked. Yep. Um, we have a, a finding in there that requires the attaching of the natural heritage stuff. Right. The had all of the like cutting the posts at forty five degree angles and very specific details. Very specific. I wanted to actually call and ask them why could they perch on the slats still? <laughs> Yeah. But I, I didn't. I was like, they, "This is something yeah. new that they put in." I'm not going to poke the bear. <laughs> I'm sure a pointy end post isn't going to deter them. The 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 they perch on snow fence. They can perch there. They can perch on a string. I feel like it's one of those great cosmetic conditions. Like we're going to make it. 
harder for them to perch, but they're just going to perch on the slats. Right. <laughs> put those fake owls up and then a bunch of those squirrely things to put on. I actually, I, I have a picture on my computer <laughs> of a crow perched yeah. on a fake owl. There's a <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> no, crows don't care. No. The, the crows figure it out in about two seconds. They're like, that thing is fake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess if the vehicle access component is, is really tricky for people, then you could put a condition that the applicant has to provide proof of permission or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be bad if something like this went in and then started to become defunct and then someone truly did block their access legally so they couldn't remove the pieces. Well, that I, would be kind of, I would think that would work the other way where they would yeah. rather have them take it out Depends on how far away this yeah, you can cross now to take Again, I don't want to say we should probably just should put sleeping dogs live, but it I, it's but it's incumbent upon them to be able to gain access legally. It's not really a wetlands protection issue as much as a private property yeah. issue. If they're telling us they can get access to from a point to get to a point and they're incumbent to do it as part of their permit, they technically have to do it within legal means, which is like building on property that you were talking about is I mean, you just can't stand on someone's property to, to build on someone else's property for funsies mm -hmm. you actually have to have reason to do it so but you can you can survey too you can trespass all over the place survey so okay. someone like to make a motion yep motion to issue as drafted so, all in favor aye, aye. aye. Any opposed Passes unanimously. The estate of Lee Rand Byrne. Grubling. 55 Grubling. Okay. So I have to say for the record, it sounds like a great like Western name when you say it that way. Mm -hmm. Lee Rand Byrne. Okay. Alright, so we're going to increase the. Uh, Length of the silt fence to be along the whole driveway down a Grove Lane, right? Yes. Well, I think you just put condition 25, the silt fence slash limit of work Please. shall be installed um, for the entire uh, length of the project. The both sides of the driveway? Uh, it seems like it should be, you know, because if there's a wetland on both sides, it's not—it's so, off their property. No, Was that? But I think that we should try. They had asked for a pool within that envelope, so okay. I left that condition in there. Mm -hmm. um, and along both sides mm -hmm. of the driveway. Right. Once it come, once they have something, we'll come back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. They can't build anything. Yeah. Sheet to work. They mentioned a pool. It's kind of. I guess on the ground where the point be. So well, what is the what is the definitive on that? There is language that shows a pool in here. Should we take it out? Yeah. Or should we say chemical treatment of pool is not permitted if pool is constructed or something to make it? If pool is to be constructed, you know, project 
needs to come. I don't know. We need to see some. Well, we have a so number nineteen is at least requiring a minor mod or plan change. Yeah. For any structure, alteration. Um, right within there. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of why I put the conditions that we put in for a pool. Yeah. <clears throat> if you want, you could specifically call out any installation of a pool or require an amended order of conditions to properly condition the activity. You that's... could do that that way, and that way, if they wanted to come back for a pool, they have to specifically apply to amend the permit for a pool, and then you could condition it at that point. That's because, another option. Which I think that's probably a little more. Yeah, it's kind of weird to approve something you don't see. Yeah. Does a 19 already cover that vote? Yeah, they would come like in for an amended order. Yeah. Instead of a minor mod. Well, they'd mod. still, yeah, so they still would have to do that. Is a minor mod would still be required to do the building within the envelope. They'd still have to file, because you'd essentially be changing the plan of record from the box to whatever it specifically was. But if there's an aspect of that that people are unsure or may want to condition at the time, you could specifically call it out separately, or you could just simply say the building and pool will require an amended order of conditions in order to properly permit to condition the project. You can simply put that too. So, yeah, because if they, like I said, if they did hardscape the whole property and you ended up with like a potential runoff issue, I think it's worth minor in front of them. Yeah. Modification right, yeah, so well, why don't let's change let's change nineteen then. So the applicant yeah. shall file a request for an amended order of conditions in order to properly condition the proposed project components. And then I think you just take out um, take out twenty three altogether. I think you take out twenty two and twenty three. Twenty three, twenty four. Oh, and twenty two. Sorry, no, only twenty two is in there. It's not in natural heritage. Sorry. So I think you'd have you'd have eighteen, which is the normal one. Nineteen, which is She'll file a request for an amended order of conditions. Um, then you would have a 20 that no materials shall be stored within the 50 foot setback because they're going to be um, removing the existing structure and then potentially installing a sewer line and some of those things. Um, no permanent dewater, which I think is, is fair. And then the silt that's conditioned. As twenty two. Okay. So that the silt pump will extend all the way to growth zone. Correct. Can we put that on both sides of the road? Yeah, you will take that in. Yes. So it says the silt fence slash limb work shall be installed with the entire length of the project along both sides of the driveway. In its entirety. Cool. Cool, cool. Even though I can't spell entirety for some reason.
they're they take the place of really, fencing. Yeah, they hide them now. They're all covered up. They're just going to crack me this level. Cool. Do you? Have it's like a big. I don't know if they're made out of vinyl or. Yeah, sort of like that. Sort of like that, but it's just, yeah. <laughs> but you, is it automatic? I suppose when you're not in the middle. Well, I mean, that's the weird thing. I would be. I would have switched. Yeah. You have to. You have to. Right. right. So the onus yeah. is on the renters to be closing these yeah, right. things. Right. Right. It's just sure. with the wildlife. And the abutters. And yeah, there'll be deer in there. And <laughs> yeah. Check the whole pool lights. <laughs> yeah, that's so scary. Not it still if, seems not weird. Not even if they're it does. Uh, bad. Even if they're close, bad short-sighted. You know, well, I feel like there'll be a guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. Be I will actually tell you that with the pool that that is by me is they we uh, spent part of the better part of a day trying to pump water off of the top of the cover right. because it was one of the big rainstorms over the summer, and we actually measured the deepest point on the cover was about. 16 inches deep. Yeah. Those things are going to be breaking left and right. Well, the cover gave, but it was just more of the cover won't open. Right. Because right. it's too heavy. Yeah. So then you got to pump it off. Right. And so. they have those pumps that sit there, but those things are like, you know. Well, that pump runs, it, I'll put it this way, it, it runs a garden hose, and you can't, it, it doesn't move enough. So yeah. Yeah. I know we uh, commandeered a couple of the more beefy trash pumps from the farm and then made short work of it but mm. that's what it took to get yeah. that thing cleared off enough to open mm. it it was a weird it was an event yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of swearing <laughs> <laughs> a lot of told you so's it was pretty good <laughs> okay so i guess my concerns with the uh watering and stuff and i would think uh any dewatering outside the hundred we have the area outside the 100 here. Well, you could put a uh, condition 23 that all dewatering is to be done outside of commission jurisdiction. Yeah, that's the best thing you can do. So, I mean, isn't that standard? Yeah. It would just, yeah. Typically. In some ways but, it would be nice to have record when people are needing to dewater. Yeah. Because if all of these properties that are close to groundwater that we're wavering are needing to dewater all winter long, then we can't be granting these waivers. You know, because then we're truly impacting. Well, here's yeah, the thing. We if need you're to talking about, it too. and if you want to get nitty gritty about this, these things are dewatering all the time because every single one of these things has a has a cover, okay? And every single one of these things has one of those little pumps that sits on it with a garden uh -huh. hose. Yeah. Oh, with the pool, like the. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I don't know how. No, no, I was thinking of the, the house. The but house. like, so I was he thinking he's, not, he's, the he's thinking of the pool for during the I mean, how often does a pool get dewatered? Oh, we mean after you partially. Well, the old ones used to, but the newer ones. The newer ones don't really. Yeah, don't. No. No, I was thinking the dewatering of the project. And yeah, the oh, okay. for construction. Well, like, so we're not, we are currently not permitting a permanent dewatering solution. So right. if they're coming to pump out their basement, if they were doing it to an area within your jurisdiction, if it was getting to there, they would technically be in violation if they were doing it on a permanent basis. Right. So if they installed the sump pump and we're kicking it out the front and just ran into Duke's Row, they would be yeah, not in the same basement. I think Andy's saying like a French drain system. Well, I'm, it needs. I just think runoff has to be infiltrated on these properties somehow. Well, uh, or I mean, you're right. So you can't have a permanent sump pump. I would suggest basement into it that it may be a good idea, and I'm not telling you guys what to do, but I think it would be an <laughs> excellent <laughs> opportunity to instruct your staff to perhaps develop a criteria for like a bioretention option mm -hmm. to be done in any project because the problem with these sites are you can't infiltrate in a lot of these spots because you're too close right right it, is it's difficult so if we developed a set of guidelines to do that i think if people had guidance to say you need to start using vegetated swales yeah. or you need to start doing these to and get that separation that you need and could incorporate that into the original design I think you would be in a better position so would I'm all for what, directing staff to do that yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, too. I would like staff to, staff I would like to, to see actually. some sort of reasonably <coughs> just some reasonable like uh, straightforward engineering I just, is that possible Art can you weigh in on this do you mind there's like lots of documents for like swale engineering yeah. online. 
um, you know, be specific to each project. Yeah. Well, is this something that we'd be saying, you know, you can you pump out your form. basement to a bioengineered swale? Yeah. Well, I think it, it would be if you wanted to do that. That the, the big problem that we have on island now is there's a gajillion basements that are getting pumped out to just to daylight mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to wherever they will go. A lot of them are storm sewers. Some are still sanitary sewers. Yeah. Um, some are just to their neighbor's yard. Um, <laughs> some are just a pipe in the bushes mm -hmm. that just discharges. Mm -hmm. And I think having somewhere defined and kind of a standard set to do that and having a mechanism to give people guidance, I think it'd be helpful not only for them, but I think it's also helpful for someone like Art to be able to say, well, this is how we do it. This is right. what's required of us to do, not, you know, wait till we all leave, you know, call up the plumber, hammer in your, your pump and your pipe and just run it down, Water you know, breath. run it down Bear Street into the catch basin. I'm not saying that anyone's done that like office products, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's just what happens. So, um, I mean, we see it a lot, and, yeah. and it's the, the big problem area, and, and I think this is why guidelines would be helpful. The big problem area that we see are places like the Brant Point neighborhood where groundwater is like that yeah. far beneath the surface. Right, right. And areas that are a little bit more impaired, Westchester Street would be another good one. Yeah. I mean, out in, you know, out in the middle of nowhere where you're, you know, out in Tom Nevers East, it's not as big deal because everything's up high. Right. But those other areas where you can't use conventional systems uh, need to have alternatives. I mean, you can't infiltrate Brant Point because there's just no space. And if groundwater's high like last year, your infiltrators are inundated already. So, Yeah, this, uh, it's going to have to be sort of site, site specific, I guess. But I think if we at least develop some sort of criteria to say this is kind of what we're looking for and what would be helpful, that that would be a good direction people to go and then have kind of a hearing process with that and go from there. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what's authorized? What's authorized staff to do this? Yeah. See, it sounds so much better when you guys direct me so to do it than when we do it on our own. I will warn you, we, we've kind of started it already, so, um, <laughs> but it, it always comes with more impetus when you put it to other departments that may be involved or things to say, well, God told us to do it, so <laughs> kind of have to. So, okay. uh, is this a vote thing we have to do? No, okay. Just it sounds like a, we're pretty unanimous that we'd love to have staff. Mm -hmm. well, I just think uh, we, we've been talking a lot about updating our regulations, yep. and I'm realizing that it's not necessarily the regulations that are bad. We just don't provide guidance for a lot of directions that we're trying to get people to go. Right. So it's kind of a combination of both. If you're going to require an option like that, you need to also say, well, we're going to make you do it this way, but this is kind of where you need to go to do it. Right. Yeah. And then let the consultants work their magic to fit within those guidelines and do what they do, but they at least kind of have some bounds and parameters. So I think that will be helpful for everyone. Yeah. I'll stop editorializing. So this one? Creative management. So some creative management for runoff. This one? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're still on the floor. Yeah, we uh, haven't. We amended we haven't, it, though. We haven't, we haven't finished up this one. All right, move to uh, issue as amended. Second. All right. those in favor? All right. Any opposed? No. That will pass unanimously. Unanimously. OK. The minutes. Everyone happy with the minutes? No. Oh, yeah. Ian wanted to call in that. <laughs> That uh, we're at the end of the at the end of the last minutes, Ian wanted to get it amended to reflect the fact that he was recused from the discussion on uh, Marsha Fader's violation, and that he was included in that. So um, that was it. So you can still approve the minutes with that change, but that's okay. He was not sitting on that item, and it said that he was. Amendments on the minutes. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. All those in favor? Uh, I'm actually more amazed that he was reading it that close. <laughs> so he does. He's a reader. Okay. 
uh, monitoring reports. SC three eight twenty eight twenty nine diamond ten Jefferson Ave. That came in. We got it to you a, a little bit late. It's the one for the bottom of Cobblestone Hill. So I figured at some point here uh, we may try to just. Since it's right next to the office for all intents and purposes, just take a little field trip mm -hmm. up there to see it in person. But it's an interesting report. I mean, some of it's a little hocus pocus. You read the invertebrate report, and you know, the diversity and richness has gone up slightly, but I don't really think it's related to the project. I think it's just Missed a little frog. bit by luck and half the sands. <laughs> but it's interesting to see. But it, yeah. I, I guess the, the point of it is it's not showing that there was a negative effect. Negative effect. Based upon the project, yep. seemingly. Yep. You can debate from that, but <laughs> uh, they're at least doing it. So it's kind of interesting yeah. to see that, that, that that's going on. I so. didn't look at it recently. Enforcement actions. All right, we, yep. we have a, yep. a, a few. Um, I'll just kind of lump all my stuff together. So um, we did issue some, some letters out to the two dischargers that we talked to last time. I have a site visit with the one site on Friday of this week to go over deconstruction and all those fun things, but they are on their way out. So um, that is forthcoming. Where is that? The Kansu Springs Pipe and oh, then okay. the one on Hobart. Um, with that being said, the other, and not necessarily enforcement that we have, is Ashley asked me to look into a spot out at Pulpus Road and I have a meeting scheduled on Monday with the property owner out there to go over what was going on and what was happening. Um, it sounded like they were uh, aggressively taking down some trees. Uh, so we're going to go over that and see if there's permits that need to be filed or an enforcement action that needs to be put out to rectify it. Um, but we will be visiting with Mr. Osley on his property very soon. Um, so we'll be headed <laughs> out there. Um, it's going to be an adventure. Yeah. For, to say the least, but Phil, Phil, <laughs> I talked to him and he was calmed down, so we, 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 sh we should be fine. We're friendly with Phil. Yes. So, um, it, well, it was worth watching, even if I didn't have a wetland concern, just because they had their truck out there and they were just because they had their truck attached to a rope hooked up to the bottom of the tree, just accelerating the truck, <laughs> trying to fell the tree. Sounds like, oh boy. So they were like, what are you watching? Like, I'm going to help you. And I was like, well, I'm about to watch a disaster happen. <laughs> I didn't say that, obviously. But so, it was bad. safety first. <laughs> <laughs> going to go out and see what it was and, and go through the whole thing. But the, the, the pictures were pretty clear. Easy so we'll, tree, we'll, we'll get that straightened away. He um, all one moved. <laughs> but that, that was going on. And then... It was a pretty long rope. It was a pretty long rope. I have to give him that. But. So it, it sounded... The description I got on the phone, it sounded pretty baffling. That's a nice way to put it. No, the way he described it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, we're going to go meet with them and take, take action from there. The other one is um, I didn't want to send the entire document to everybody uh, because it's ginormous. Um, but we were we were sued again, um, cool. not as part of an appeal, which makes it interesting. Um, the folks at seventy five and seventy seven Easton Street, or formerly Two North Beach Street, as we all know it. Um, so Don and Phyllis Visco have sued the commission and their claim is that the definition in our regulations of uh, vegetated wetland and isolated vegetated wetland are uh, unconstitutional. Yeah. So uh, it's a long, I mean, it literally is like that thick. Uh, but we're only, no, they just did the one to the commission. Um, like I said, I had to send it in like seven emails to town council because it was so thick. And I had to it's scan it all in. Um, I'll try to take out the just the legally part for people to read. But the essential claim is by not uh, exactly following the state and core standards for how we're delineating vegetated wetlands. Um, and that by imposing buffer zones from vegetated wetlands, we are essentially 
taking away their 14th mm -hmm. Amendment rights on property ownership for due process and mm -hmm. thus our definition for those two very specific resource areas are unconstitutional. I'm curious to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. I have my yeah. thoughts on the whole thing, but um, I'm not sure how, how where that goes. It seems so like a very... hold the record for the number of lawsuits on a piece of property? Oh, no. I'm sure. I mean, maybe against the commission, yes. Or on Nantucket, us, it's yeah, not even close. Us, yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, there's been lawsuits on some properties that have been lawsuits on lawsuits. But um, mm. we turned it over. Town Council has it. He said he'd give us a little update, but just wanted to at least let everybody know. Um, Andy, your name is the one that's listed. You're oh, very cool. lucky. Way to go. Because you, you also come first alphabetically. Ah, that's okay. And also I'd are the chairman. I'd love to know how many so, uh, times I've been sued. Um, a number. But it, it, <laughs> you might have the record. But. It's an interesting read, but it, there are some interesting thoughts in it that, I mean, even by adopting a minimum size, I mean, their claim is that if it's a square foot mm -hmm. where you meet the criteria, it could technically be a vegetated wetland, which I guess is true. I've never seen that happen. But um, I was also confused in my comment to council was I'm very confused how we violated their due process by having a advertised public hearing that has an appeals process that they authorize the person to file on the property that they own and how now we are violating their due process rights. <laughs> I was very confused. Yeah, I remember that that one wasn't appealed and you were like, oh. Yeah. Well, apparently they didn't want to appeal because they felt that, you know, they had been constitutionally wrong. So uh. we'll see how it... We'll see how it goes. Hmm. It, it was, it's kind of dizzying. But yeah. It's, uh, to me, I, I'm hoping that this gets just to the end. Because I don't know. <laughs> would you, if you finish this, I'm not really sure what other What's avenues next? you would have to explore now that you've claimed that we're violating the Constitution of Massachusetts and the United States. So I think that's hopefully the end. Wow. Do they have kids? Yes. Yeah, this forever. is Don and Phyllis Visco. Yeah. So. <laughs> forever. Don and Visco. There's Steve, the there's uh, forever. David, there's... So. Yeah, I was about to say. Before I said it, I knew it when I said it. Yeah. Okay. But that's it for me. I don't have anything okay. else Very really good. to add. Well, reports, no CPC, no MPEDC, no mosquitoes. I don't think there's any other reports. Uh, Commissioner comments? Great. Administrative staff report? Well, I'm done. I did mine all at once. Okay. By art. Good night. Motion to adjourn? Motion, yes. Second. Colin okay. Barrett? Aye. 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 Good job, guys. Yeah, Our next meeting is at what time? Five. 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 I'm still in. Oh, 